Greetings brethren, Hausburger Donkey here again, and uh, the last step only took me about two and a half hours in total, but uh, it has taken me five days to complete that step, which just uh, kind of goes to show how much uh, free time I actually have at the moment, it's, it's not a lot. So, um, I'll just give you a quick overview of where we are now. So this is, this is the lads, the skin color is done on all of them. And the plumes are done on all of them, and, uh, well, the hair on the back of the head. You can see it much better on these skirmishers right here. As you can see, the hair is done as well. So now it's time to move on to the tunics. And uh, because I have decided that I'm going to go for pretty uniform shields, uh, there's only two different shield designs for most of the army. And then uh, the Triarii, being the elite troops and the sort of veteran soldiers, they have their own shield designs. <clears throat> um, I've decided that I'm going to go uh, not with uniform colors on the tunics, so I'm going to need a few different ones. And I think something like this is a perfect way to both have more, um, well, have a more diverse looking army and also to introduce some narrative. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use glazes of Vallejo model color pale sand and Vallejo model color gray blue for the skirmishers, uh, well, the the proper skirmishers, these ones, and the Velitas, which uh, I'll be having in a sort of a formation on the, the basing. But all of the skirmishers will have these two colors for their tunics um, as a mix. Then for the uh, for the Hastati, I'm going to introduce a third color, the uh, this German field gray, because it's it's kind of a grayish green, uh, still kind of a, a cheap cloth dye, but uh, not quite as cheap as uh, undyed and uh, a really light sort of gray uh, blue would be. So this this will be for the Hastati. Then for the uh, Principes, I'm introducing a dark red and a reflective green, and I'm taking out the undyed because, well, in this in this case, there there will be no Principes willing to run around with uh, with undyed with an undyed tunic that's just beneath them. So we'll be using these four on the Principes, which already makes them a little bit more varied. Uh, definitely heavier on these two, but still using the other two. Um, and then these three I will introduce for the Triarii, the uh, pastel blue, the Oxford blue, and the flat green. And I'm going to take out the two remaining colors from the uh, Velitas and the Astati. So all that's going to be left is these three, but I'm probably going to be a, a bit less on the reflective green because I do have the flat green in there. So have these four colors and a few of these, but not too many. And that's how that progression is going to work. So that the Triarii have the most different colors and they, they uh, definitely have the richest colors as well. And uh, yeah, then the, the lesser the troops, the lesser the cloth dyes that they can afford. And that way, not only is the army going to look a bit more varied, but at the same time, it's also going to have a, a sort of narrative to it, where, you know, the, the richer troops have the richer cloth dyes. Right, I already prepared a few, and I'm going to show it on uh, a strip of Hastati and a strip of Triarii. So... You do want, for this kind of glazing work, uh, you want a slightly larger brush. So I'm using a a 2 uh, from Da Vinci. And you, you also want it to be a slightly larger bodied brush. So in this case, this is a, an aquarelle brush, which is meant for, you know, very liquidy paints. You don't want something that has... Um, do I have one with a really narrow body? I guess this one, although it's from the same range. But, you know, you want you want more than that. You want something with a bit more uh, of a body. You can you can go even further. Do I have a, a really big body brush? I don't think I do currently. No, I don't. Anyway, but um, you can go for something even um, with an even bigger body because for this kind of thing you do want that. 
because otherwise you'll get a lot of paint stuck down in the ferrule and it'll, it'll ruin your brushes. So the way this works, uh, the, the glazing step, is you have some paint and you water it down pretty thinly. I don't know how well you can see this, but this is very thin paint. And it is thin to the point where, let me just show you, when you touch it to the paper, see that? It'll immediately start soaking it up. And you're left with very little. And that's also what you want to do every time you, you, you dip into the paint. You want to brush off or let, let, uh, soak off the liquid on the uh, on the paper and then you start carefully putting a thin layer on you want it to be evenly thin and by doing that the lovely pre-shading that we did with the dry brushing and the the dark wash will shine through and immediately give you shadows and highlights with just one coat the only thing that you have to be careful with is you have to kind of work quickly because the, the layer is so thin that it'll dry pretty quickly and um, you'll get really nasty watermarks if you don't work quickly enough. So you kind of want to pick areas. So in, the, in this case I'm painting the tunic below the belt because that's all one part and then it is separated uh, from the rest of the tunic by the belt. and then. Once we finished this one area, we can then move on to the rest of the tunic. We want it to get very even, as even as possible. Avoid watermarks. I think this paint actually needs a little bit more water in it. Might be a little bit too thick. Right, and then um, we're also going to do a little bit underneath, but it doesn't have to be super neat. Uh, as long as there's no... let me... I need to actually do this close up, otherwise I'll screw it up. Sorry about that, but uh, the camera is just too much in the way. So, as you can see, I, I didn't do particularly much underneath, just a little bit to, to sort of have a, a continuity in there. And then now, actually, I'm gonna grab some more water, introduce it here, because this is a little bit too thick already. I pre mixed all of these, so it makes sense that it would dry just a tiny little bit. Again, we grab some paint, we let the water soak off on the towel, and then we're gonna pick out the next area. I'm gonna go for this neck area in between the shoulder straps of his pectoral plate. And again, it doesn't matter if we uh, overspill onto the metal, because I'm going to paint that proper. Uh, but I am trying to not overspill too much on the leather straps, because I will also glaze those. And we go around. See, there was a bit of overspill from the skin. But as long as it's not too much, it won't really come into effect too much later on. Alright, now I'm going to do this side of the tunic. Avoid the leather strap. Get around. Again, avoid the leather strap. Make sure that the sleeve... Uh, oh, blah, sorry. The sleeve edge around the arm has plenty as well. Um, you don't have to be too neat in getting around there because of all the, the wash in the recess. It, it gives us a nice shadow, so if we're not super neat there, that's fine. Because, I mean, it's, it's underneath the model anyway, so once they're all on their bases, we're not really going to see that kind of stuff anymore. And then the last section, I think, oh no, actually there was one more. So the other sleeve. When working around these sort of top areas, you want to be as continue, uh, continuing in the painting as possible, uh, because that's the most important area, because we'll, we'll see this the most from the top. So this has to be really the best coverage, and the most even. So we definitely don't want any watermarks up there. Alright. 
And then lastly, we have to do the bit underneath the pectoral plate. On the front. And on the back. And a little bit more here. Although the shield will cover most of that. All right, and that's, that's this tunic done. Maybe try to feather a little bit more onto here to have some more paint. But yeah, this is, uh, this is what we're aiming for. And as you can see, because of the, the dry brushing that we did, did beforehand, it's basically already done. Now, um, with this sort of painting method, I said this a few times before, you kind of have to have a bit of faith uh, because it, in some like it, the face looks a bit rough and the the tunic it just doesn't it just doesn't look super great right now, but once you painted everything else it will look just fine. So you really have to have faith uh, that when you're done with all of the other stuff that you're going to put on this miniature, it is going to look good. So just just perse persevere. All right, and I'm going to continue uh, painting all of these. I just wanted to also show you because. We have some Triarii, and I'm gonna do his in purple, I think. That might also need a bit more water. Also, don't do what I'm doing right here. I'm, I'm kind of ruining this brush. <laughs> you should always have a, a separate mixing brush for doing stuff like that, so you don't so you don't uh, ruin your brushes prematurely. And we soak off the excess. We're gonna pick. I'll just take this one on the edge, because they they don't actually have that much tunic showing. We need to be all the neater and make sure that it's well covered. That's actually too much water. I think I added, but that's okay. So this guy has a bit more of a uh, a lavender colored tunic. And then we also definitely want some paint here underneath. It's more important with this one because the tunic bit is so short under the chainmail. And then I'm gonna do the back. It's not really focusing, is it? Come on. There we go. So I'm still having issues really getting this uh, painted well on camera. Maybe one of these days I'll get better at that. Right, uh, and then we do the sleeves. Let's start in the center and sort of draw the paint toward the edges. And uh, this is definitely also something you just have to kind of practice, this, this glazing technique. You'll, you'll definitely get better at that while doing it. Uh, sometimes you'll use too much paint, like I did here, for example, and you can try to soak that away a little bit. Move it around still if you're quick. But uh, be be aware that uh, tide marks are the worst thing you can put on these uh, sort of areas when you're using this technique. So it's, it's better to have a, a little extra spot of paint where you didn't want it than to go over it and then have a tide mark, because that looks worse. All right, now he has a lovely lavender tunic because he's a very fashionable, rich man. All right, that's that. So yeah, and I'll go through all of these and uh, give them all their, their tunics, uh, more lavish and rich looking ones on the Triarii, less so on the Hastati and Velitas. And then the next step will be very, very similar to this step. I'll still go through it because it will be for all the leather parts and all the wood parts. Uh, it'll still be the same technique, different paints obviously, but uh, I still want to show it uh, proper just so that it's very clear. All right, I hope uh, you're still enjoying this tutorial. I know the videos are running pretty long, but I am trying to be as, uh, as thorough in explaining how it works as possible. And um, I didn't check before, but I think we're up to like eight and a half hours now in total. Uh, I'm guessing this is probably going to take another two or three hours to get all the tunics done. So we'll be at 11, 
my guess is we might finish this army in under 30 hours, including basing, which would be pretty great, because that's 100 figures in 30 hours. That's, uh, you know, that's three figures an hour. That's, that's not too shabby from start to finish. All right, thanks for watching. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video, and take care. Bye-bye.